Greetings, Microscopists. This is Eric Miller from Instructinate, and today we're looking at a little film from 1980 based on a novel by Bram Stoker and starring Charlton Heston called The Awakening. So Charlton Heston's character is an Egyptologist who searches for and finds this lost Egyptian queen's tomb, and well, years later, it turns out this mummy is losing weight for some reason, and no one knows why, since after all, she's been eating regularly. And Heston wants to bring the mummy to London for examination, but the Egyptian guy is like, no way, she's staying here in Egypt, and then he walks out on the street and gets run over by not one, but two cars. Bad luck for him, Mummy goes to London. So we're about an hour into the movie and we see some samples from the Mummy get examined in a TEM in London. The guy says there's a virus there and it's about 800 angstroms and it's present everywhere in the Mummy, in her wrappings, in the sarcophagus, etc. His conclusion is that it's the virus that's causing the mummy to lose weight, and it's totally not because the mummy is trying to come back to life or anything like that, and they should send the mummy back to Egypt for antiviral treatment. But Heston's character is really not keen on that and wants it to stay in London for totally reasonable reasons that have nothing to do with bringing a mummy back to life. Okay, so let's look at this piece by piece. First, we're looking into the fishbowl down at the phosphorescent screen, and then the image wigs out for a second and we see a grid, which we'll get to in a minute. Now, when we see the image go all wiggy, uh, what I believe is happening here was the operator was switching the magnification mode from high mag to low mag. So what does that mean? The magnification in the TEM is so high that it's basically impossible to look around a three millimeter grid to try and find parts of your sample you wanna look at unless you've got a spare week or two. So switching the microscope to low mag mode will allow you to get a better view of this grid. So what's happening in the microscope to allow that to happen? Well, it's pretty simple. In low mag mode, the objective lens is either turned off or the current running through it is severely reduced. This allows you to go to a much lower magnification and you'll instead use the intermediate and or projector lens to focus. This of course destroys your resolution, but you're also not going to be able to go up very high in magnification either so it doesn't really matter. So back to this grid. A grid is a little three millimeter disc, usually made out of copper, and it will have a very fine mesh pattern on it. Usually the me mesh is made up of little squares, but here we have a fancy grid with hexagons. So this grid will hold large flat samples like sections from a microtome, or as in this case, it will have an ultra thin film made of a material called formvar covering it. Whatever it is that we're looking at, be it some kind of particles or bacteria or viruses or whatever, they will sit on this very electron transparent form var and allow us to look at them. So what's happening here is the basic, we're looking at something in an electron microscope sample, a TEM grid, which is exactly what this is. And it's not just any TEM grid, it's an old beat up grid that they just decided to throw into the instrument so that it would look like something was happening. Now I say that because we can see most of the hexagon holes here in this grid have no form var over them and there are a bunch of areas where there's kind of some and other areas where the form var has crinkled up and folded over onto itself. But even in the areas with just the single layer of form var, we can't see that there's anything there. This is just an old unused grid that these guys had laying around the lab. As for this instrument, just looking at the fishbowl, this makes me think it's made by Philips, but I could be totally wrong about that. If anybody watching can identify this TEM, which was already in use in 1980, please let us know in the comments. So the guy at the microscope says to take the image up to 50,000, which is maybe correct, but it looks to me like they're still in low mag mode here uh, since we can still see entire hexagons. Uh, and he then looks at the blank screen and says the virus is 800 angstroms. Well, 800 angstroms or 80 nanometers is a reasonable size for a virus, but how he determined that by just looking at the screen I have no idea. On modern digital TEMs, of course, you'll have a magnification marker on the screen, as well as measurement tools uh, that you can whip out at any time and draw on the image on your computer screen. However, in these pre-digital days, in order to get a measurement of something, this is what you'd have to do. Take an image on film, 
Write down the film number so you know which image was yours. Turn off the TEM. Take the film canister out of the bottom of the TEM. In a pitch black dark room, remove the exact number of pieces of film that you exposed and then put them in the developer. Then you'll have your little TEM negative. To get a measurement off of it, you'll have to know the magnification you took the image at. And then you can do some math. And then you should have your measurement. And of course, if you made an enlargement of the negative, you uh, maybe to make a finer measurement of a specific area of the image, you'll need to calculate exactly how much you would enlarge the image and factor that into your measurements. Uh, in the digital age, you could cheat a little bit uh, like I did by putting a transparent ruler on the digital scanner with the negative. Uh, this should allow you to get much more accurate measurements using software like ImageJ or something. But that's, of course, still dealing with the negative itself and not a digital image from out of the instrument directly. If this seems like a huge hassle that can't be done in the two seconds this guy spent thinking about exactly how big this non-existent virus was, you're right. So a couple of other interesting things to note here is, number one, this is clearly an actual TEM room, and I can tell you that for almost certainty because of all these images of micrographs they have on the walls. You take a good picture, you stick that bad boy on the wall. This place is real. Number two, what I think is fascinating is that the camera is actually seeing the green phosphorus screen. And this must have been very tricky to light and expose correctly because I can tell you this green screen is very dim. The operator must have done everything he could to increase the current and the brightness on the screen. In this shot especially, we see the screen, the people sitting there, and even the walls in the background. As mundane as this looks, this would have been a very difficult shot to pull off, so kudos to the director of photography here. That's about all I can say about this, and I would rate it as pretty good. The TEM is doing exactly what a TEM does in real life. The only major knock I can give this scene is the empty grid is the only thing we get to see, which is a bummer. Anyway, I'm sure this movie has a happy ending and the no mummies end up coming back to life and try to take over the world. Now, if you know of any movies or TV shows where an electron microscope shows up, let me know about it in the comments. This is Eric Miller from Instructinate. Thanks. We'll see you next time. <laughs>